So, we were discussing the series of uh, non negative terms in the last class and towards that we saw this root test. Um, let me just recall what we suppose this sigma a n is the series, then we looked at nth root of a n and lim sup of this. And what we said is that if this is bigger than 1, uh, sorry, if this is less than 1, the series converges, if this is bigger than 1, the series diverges, and if this is equal to 1, this test gives no information. And we have also seen examples of both the, both the types. Now, in this connection, there is one more thing that uh, is required uh, when we discuss this series of non negative terms. Till now, we have been talking about real numbers and real number systems, but for the discussion of this convergence or divergence of a series, it is also convenient to discuss what is called extended real line, okay. extended real line. Okay. Extended real line means nothing but your usual real line along with these two symbols, plus infinity and minus infinity. Some books denote it as R star, okay, this usual real line R star. Okay. And these two additional symbols with the uh, usual properties associated with them. For example, properties like uh, x plus infinity is infinity for every x in R, etcetera. Okay. And similarly, x minus infinity is minus infinity for every x in r and x multiplied by infinity uh, that is infinity if x is bigger than 0 and minus infinity if x is less than 0 and if x equal to 0 that is usually left undefined and sometimes it is taken as 0 that you will see when you learn major theory in most of the major theory course 0 into infinity is taken as 0, but in general it is left undefined and x divided by infinity that is taken to be 0 and x divided by 0 that is taken as infinity and we avoid things like just as 0 into infinity is not defined. Similarly, infinity things like infinity minus infinity or infinity by infinity these things are left undefined. Okay. That is about the algebraic operations and about the order, this is the thing that is for every real number x minus infinity is strictly less than x and strictly less than plus infinity for, for all x in R. Okay. All right. Now, this has some convenience. For example, we have seen that if a monotonically increasing sequence is bounded above, then it converges. Okay. But if we are using extended real line, we can say that if a sequence is protonically increasing, then it uh, either converges or diverges to infinity. If it is not bounded above, then, it then we say it diverges to infinity. Similarly, for monotonically decreasing sequence, if it is bounded below, then it converges to some real number. Otherwise, we say it diverges to minus infinity. In fact, some books also use the rotation converges to plus infinity or minus infinity, but we shall not use that. Okay. Now, what is the relevance of this to uh, uh, this uh, root test? It is that this L, this L can be infinity. Okay, so that comes under the case L bigger than one. Okay, that comes under the case L bigger than one, and then uh, so even if this L, so for example, if you uh, look at the definition of limit superior, we had taken the sequence, uh, uh, let us say alpha k, where alpha k was supremum of a n for n bigger than or equal to k. So, that uh, limit of that sequence can be uh, infinity. So, limit superior of the sequences or can be infinity, limit inferior can be minus infinity. So, even those cases can be included with, with this convention all right. Then let us similarly look at the another uh, popular test namely ratio test. Okay. So, here also we are looking at the series let us say sigma a n and each a n is bigger than or equal to 0. So, we look at uh, 
limit superior of uh, a n plus 1 by n that is why it is called ratio test limit superior of a n plus 1 by n. So, this is the ok let us say that if if this is less than 1 then sigma a n converges. and if okay so instead of saying that this limit superior is bigger than what uh, what i'll say is the following if uh, if an plus 1 by an if this is bigger than or equal to 1 let us say if this happens for all n bigger than or equal to some n0 then sigma a n diverges ok. And if it is we know that for any sequence limit inferior is less than or equal to limit superior ok right. So, you look at this sequence. So, a n plus 1 by a n. So, suppose the following thing happens that uh, limit inferior of uh, a n plus 1 by a n suppose this is less than or equal to 1 sorry this is less than or equal to 1 and limit superior is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. Then the test gives no information ok then no information that means the series may converge or series may diverge we can give the examples of both the kinds. Um, we can see that as far as the proofs are concerned ok let us dispose of something certain things which are trivial ok. As far as this last thing is concerned we can say that we already seen the examples of this for example if you look at say sigma 1 by n and let us say sigma 1 by n square ok then a n plus 1 by a n will be either something like n plus 1 by n or n plus 1 square by n square and the limit of that will be 1 ok. And once the limit is 1 limit inferior limit superior everything is 1. So, it will be this case ok and we know that this series converges and this diverges ok. So, there is nothing new here. So, the, so this in this case this test gives no information right ok. Similarly, if you look at this part 2 if a n plus 1 is bigger than or equal to a n for all n bigger than or equal to n 0 then it will mean that uh, in particular uh, for example a n a n 0 plus 1 is bigger than or equal to a n 0 ok right ok and then a n 0 plus 2 is bigger than or equal to that, that means all a n's will be bigger than or equal to a n 0 for n bigger than or equal to n 0. So, in which case uh, a, uh, a n cannot tend to 0 ok since all of them are bigger than or equal to a n 0 ok and a n 0 is strictly bigger than 0. So, the sequence a n cannot tend to 0 and hence the series cannot converge ok all right. Now, let us look at this first case if limit superior of a n plus 1 by a n is less than 1 we can suppose that limit superior is l ok. So, let us say l is uh, let us say l is limit superior a n plus 1 by a n and if l is less than 1 then as we have done in the previous case we can always find some number beta which lies between l and 1 ok. So, consider some number beta which lies between l and 1 ok and then we can say that uh, uh, there will exist some n 0 such that for all n bigger than or equal to n 0 a n plus 1 by a n is less than beta ok. In because l is limit superior in fact exactly the same argument we use even for the uh, even for the pr uh, proof of the similar case in the root test also so we can say that uh, there exists n0 in n such that uh, an plus 1 by an is less than or equal to beta for all n bigger than or equal to n0 ok. Then what we can say after this is that if that is the case for example, 
apply this for n equal to n0 okay. and you will get okay I will continue there. Um, so if you apply it for n equal to n0 you will get the following that is a n0 plus 1 this will be less than or equal to beta times a n0 okay. okay. Then a n0 plus 2 will be less than or equal to beta times a n0 plus 1 so it will be less than or equal to beta square times a n0 right. So you can say for example a n0 plus 2 this will be less than or equal to beta square times a n0 okay, right and in general you can say that a n0 plus k will be less than or equal to beta to the power k a n0 okay. In other words you can compare this given series to the series beta to the power n okay sigma beta to the power n and this is a convergent series okay not beta to the power n let us say beta to the power n into a n0 okay. So for n bigger than or equal to n0 each term of the given series sigma n is less than or equal to the corresponding term of this series and this is a convergent series and hence by the comparison test the given series converges you know, right. So that is the argument in this case. You know. Of course, given a series of positive terms, you can either apply root test or ratio test to decide the convergence or divergence of that series. Of course, it can happen that neither the test is applicable, okay, right. In general, the ratio test is easy to apply, okay, compared easier compared to the root test, but root test is more applicable, okay. There are there are there are instances where root test will give some positive answer but the ratio test will fail okay one can easily construct examples like that okay. but let us not go into that kind of thing. Since we are here at this convergence or divergence of the series let us also discuss one or two points which follow immediately from this okay. Let us also look at the series like this sigma n going from 0 to infinity a n x to the power n such a series is called power series okay and of course this is again when we subsequently when we discuss the sequences and series of functions we shall come back to the series like this. So this is a special case of this the reason for discussing it now is that certain things about the power series follow immediately from whatever we have discussed so far and so I am discussing that here or more generally we can think of a series like this a n uh, x minus a to the power n okay all right. Now this is called power series with center at a okay and whenever we are given a series like this okay the question to be asked is for what values of x does this series converge and obviously for what values of x does it diverge. Okay? those are the questions. You can notice one thing very clearly here is that you can make a change of variable okay. You can write uh, let us say y equal to x minus a okay. You can write then this series becomes a n y to the power n okay and so whenever this series converges for a particular value of y it will converge for the part that uh, that value of x you can put y equal to x minus a and draw the appropriate conclusions for x. In other words what I want to say is that it is enough to discuss it is enough to discuss the series like this sigma a n x to the power n n going from 0 to infinity which is same as saying that without loss of generality we can assume that the center is 0 okay and it is enough to discuss that case and if center is something else we can easily draw the conclusions about those series by using the knowledge about this series. <coughs> now if we instead of this series now suppose I look at this series sigma n going from 0 to n mod a n x to the power n okay. Then we know that whenever this series converges then this series also converges because we have shown that every absolutely convergent series is convergent. So we will look at this okay and let us apply for example the uh, root test for this okay. So if you look at the nth term here 
uh, it is a n x to the power n. So, if you look at the nth root of that nth root of uh, mod a n into mod x to the power n, okay, then that is nothing but nth root of mod a n into mod x. Okay. So, if you look at the limb soup of the whole thing that will nothing but since this is independent of n. So, it will be limb soup of this multiplied by mod x. So, that is why what is done usually is that uh, what is done usually is that uh, we take uh, let us say L as limb soup of uh, nth root of mod a n. Okay. And what it means is that if L into mod x is less than 1, if L into mod x is less than 1, then this series converges. If L into mod x is bigger than 1, the series does not converge. And if L into mod x is equal to 1, we can cannot conclude anything from this information. And since every time we are talking of things like L into mod x is less than 1, etcetera. Uh, it is convenient to take this number r as 1 by l okay okay r as 1 by l and then say that uh, and say that whenever mod x is less than r that is same as saying that l into mod x is less than 1 okay so so what it, what we can say from here is that if mod x is less than r then this series converges then and which is same as saying that this series sigma a n x to the power n converges absolutely. Okay. All right. And similarly, one can write if pod x bigger than r, if mod x bigger than n, then we can similarly show that this series diverges. And we have to discuss if mod x equal to r, we do not know, we have to we have to test that case independently. Okay, right. Now, what we can see from here is that if mod x is less than r, that is same as saying that x lies between minus r to plus r, okay. That is same as saying that x lies between so that is if you look at this interval uh, minus r to plus r. So, what we are saying is that whenever x is inside this interval the series converges absolutely right and whenever x is outside this interval the series diverges okay and and the end points of course we do not know we have to test it independently okay and that is why this interval is called interval of convergence of the power series okay? we call this interval of convergence interval of convergence and this r is called the radius of convergence. Let us take one or two examples. This one example which we have already seen, sigma x to the power n, n going from zero to infinity. Okay. Examples. This is the geometric series, and we have seen that uh, this series converges if mod x is less than one. Okay, and diverges in this particular case it will diverge for mod x because or that is it diverges for mod x equal to 1 and it also diverges for this end points also when r is plus 1 and r is r is minus 1 okay now what is to be noted under this is that we are here we are using the extended real line okay that is if this l is infinity then the radius is zero okay we make that conversion if uh, r is equal to 1 by l with the convention that if this l is 0 r is infinity and if l is infinity r is r is 0 okay, okay. 
So, to get an example like that, let us look at this next example sigma x to the power n by factorial n, n going from 0 to infinity. Okay. In this case, it is easy to look at the ratio test instead of the root test, okay. because here a n is 1 by n factorial. Okay. So, if you look at uh, a n plus 1 by a n, okay, it is 1 by n plus 1 factorial and divided by again 1 by n. So, it is n factorial by n plus 1 factorial. So, it is 1 by n. Okay. So, 1 by n plus 1, right. 1 by n plus 1 okay. and that tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Okay. All right. And using this we can show that, uh, that that is same as saying that this of course, I should have taken nth root of mod n, but we can show that that is also 0 okay. nth root of mod n that is also 0 and then uh, that will uh, that will say that L is 0 that is saying that R is infinity. Okay. That means, this series converges absolutely for every value of x. Okay. So, this converges absolutely converges absolutely for all x in R. Okay. And this is what you already call this is what is called geometric series. And you perhaps also know that this is called exponential series. Okay. Is this clear? Whatever we have done so far. So now let me take a special case of this. Okay, I take x equal to one. Okay, I take x equal to one. Then this will be sigma one by n factorial, n going from zero to infinity. Okay. Okay, and our idea is to show that the sum of this series is e. This is what we want to show. Okay. All right. What is it that we already shown about this number e? It is the limit of this. That is, suppose you take x n as one plus one by n raised to n. Okay. Then we have shown that this tends to e. Okay. We have shown that this tends to e. Okay. And now, what we want to show is that limit of this is e. Limit of this is E means okay. We already know that this converges. Okay, from whatever we have discussed, okay, we already know that this series converges. It converges means what? Its sequence of its partial sum converges. Okay, so suppose we take this sequence. It is S n is this one plus one by one factorial. It's starting from zero, so it is etc. Up to one say one by two factorial up to one by n factorial. Okay, one by n factorial. Okay. And suppose, uh, since we know that it, it is converges, suppose we call that limit of this as okay. Let me just say, suppose S n tends to S as n tends to infinity. Okay. Okay. Then that is uh, then what we want to show is that S is equal to e. Okay. Right. What we want to show is that S is equal to e. All right. Now, in this case, let me also mention. See, essentially, what we are saying that the number e can be defined in more than one ways. Okay, this is one one way you get the number e. This is another way in which you get number e. In fact, it can be also defined in one or two more ways. Only thing is that whenever you do it, you have to show that all those definitions are the same. So, since we are not going to consider all those things, let me just give you one reference. Okay, uh, it's a book by one K. D. Joshi. He's a Professor in IIT Bombay, okay, K. D. Joshi. The title is uh, Calculus for Scientists and Engineers. Okay. Calculus for Scientists and Engineers. Okay. In this book, there is a section. Okay, 
and the title of that section is this E equal to E equal to E. and you can predict from this title that the number e is defined in three different ways and this section shows the equivalence of all those three definitions okay so two of those ways are this okay what we are discussing there is one more way so if you are interested in that you can just have a look at this okay for the time being we shall just show the equivalence of these two definitions okay let me recall that while when we are when we proved that this sequence converges we had got this uh, equation xn is 1 plus 1 by n raised to n and then we had expanded this by using binomial theorem so it is 1 plus uh, 1 plus we had it at n into n minus 1 by 2 into 1 by n into n minus 1 into into 1 by n square etc okay all right and then we had simplified this to the following 1 plus 1 plus uh, 1 into 1 minus 1 by n into 1 by 2 factorial okay and similarly the next term will be uh, 1 into 1 minus 1 by n into 1 minus 2 by n into 1 by factorial 3 etc so suppose we go on like this the mth term will be uh, 1 into 1 minus 1 by n into 1 minus 2 by n etc. Uh, 1 1 minus m by n into 1 by m factorial okay this way okay and at that time we had noticed that each of these term 1 minus 1 by n whatever factors are occurring here they are all less than or equal to 1 okay you are subtracting some positive quantity from this so so this will be uh, less than or equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 by factorial 2 etc etc up to 1 by n factorial okay right and which is nothing but sn okay so suppose you recall this so what does this prove that xn is less than or equal to sn for all n okay xn is less than or equal to sn for all n okay all right so taking the limit what follows so limit of xn should be less than or equal to limit of sn so we have called this limit of this as s limit of this as e so this proves that e is so this implies that e is less than or equal to s okay okay our aim is to show that e equal to s remember okay this is what we want to show to show e is equal to s and now what we have shown is that E is less than or equal to S. Right? Okay. So what, what is left? We will also show that S is less than or equal to E. Okay. We will also show that S is less than or equal to E. Okay. Now from this calculation you will see that Suppose I take some m which is less than n. Okay. Suppose I take some m which is less than. N, let us say, okay, one less than or equal to m less than n. Okay. Then what we can see from here is that uh, uh, x n is this, etc. Going up to up to this nth term. Okay. So suppose I ignore all these subsequent terms. Then I can say that xn is bigger than or equal to the sum up to this. Okay, so what I can say is that xn is xn is bigger than or equal to one plus one plus one minus one by n into one by factorial two, etc. Let us say. Let me write one more term: plus one into one minus one by n into one minus two by n into one by factorial three and suppose I go up to m and stop there okay so that will be 1 into 1 minus 1 by n into 1 minus 2 by n etc etc it will be I think this should have been m minus 1 by n here okay because if you compare with the previous term it is 2 by n and then followed by 1 by factorial 3 okay so this goes up to 1 minus m minus 1 by n 
into 1 by factorial f. Okay. Okay. Now, this is true for all n satisfying this. Okay. For you can say that this is true for all n bigger than m. Okay. So, what I say now is that keep some value of m fixed. Okay. So, keep m fixed and let m vary. Okay. Keep m fixed and let m vary, let n be bigger than n. Okay. So, so, keeping m fixed and letting n vary, suppose I take the limit of both sides. Okay. Suppose I take the limit of both sides, okay. then what is the limit of this? This will go to E. Okay. This will go to E. What will happen to the left hand side? Remember, m is fixed. Okay. So, this, this term 1 by n will go to 0. Okay. So, similarly 1 by n, 2 by n, etcetera, m minus 1 by n, all of them will go to 0. So, that means, these terms are going to become 1. Okay. Okay. So, what we can say is that, that will imply that taking limit E will be bigger than or equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 by factorial 2 plus 1 by factorial 3 etcetera, etcetera up to 1 by m factorial. Okay. Okay. That is nothing but S m. That is the thing, but S m. Okay. Okay. And what did we prove now? We proved that E is bigger than or equal to S m. Okay. But after taking the limit with respect to n, E is bigger than or equal to S m, we can say for all m. Okay. E is bigger than or equal to S m for all m. Okay. And hence, we can say that since E is bigger than or equal to S m for all m, E is also bigger than or equal to S. Okay. Okay, so, this implies E is bigger than or equal to S. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So, what it shows is that these two limits E is equal to S are the same. That means, the number E can be defined in these two different fashion. It is a limit of 1 plus 1 by n raised to n and it is also the limit of this series. Okay. Suppose now we want to also say how this S n, this is a partial sum of the series. Okay. And so that means S n goes to E means for large values of n, the difference between S n and E is small. That means you can take S n as an approximation of E, S n as an approximation of E for large values of n. Now the question is suppose we want to know how good or bad this approximation is. Okay. For example, I can have a problem like this. I want to find a value of e, let us say correct to two decimal places. Okay. Then I should know what is the difference between, then I should know what n I should take. So, that difference between e and s n is less than 1 by 100. Okay. Right. That will be correct to, then I can take s n to be the value of e correct to two decimal places. Okay. So, to do that, we should have some estimate for the difference between e and s n. Of course, one thing is there, all of these S n are less than or equal to E, right? because this is a series of positive terms and S n is a monotonically increasing sequence that is converging to E. So, this E is the least upper bound of S n. Okay? So, this is something that we know already that S n is less than or equal to E or which is same as saying that 0 is less than or equal to E minus S n. Okay? Okay? All right. Now, we, let us have some estimate for E minus S n. Okay? So, what is E minus S n? S n is E is this, let us take this definition though. E is this and S n is 1 it is up to 1 by n factorial. So, what can we say about E minus S n? E minus S n should be the remaining terms of this series, okay, which is sometimes called a tail of the series. Okay. So, let us let us have some estimate for that. So, E minus S n will be this 1 by n plus 1 factorial plus 1 by n plus 2 factorial etcetera plus 1 by n plus 3 factorial etcetera. etcetera. Okay. All right. Now, suppose I want to have some estimate for this term. Okay. Then what I can do is that I will take this 1 by n plus 1 factorial as a common factor from everything okay. and write the terms which are inside as 1 by this will be 1, 1, 1 by n plus 2. Okay this will be 
open by n plus 2 into n plus 3. Okay. Now, there is one observation here. Okay. This term is one, I do not know anything about this. Is it clear that this is less than or equal to 1 by n plus 1? Is it clear that this is less than or equal to 1 by n plus 1 square and subsequently, subsequent term will be less than or equal to 1 by n plus 1 cube. Is that clear? Okay, so, we can say that this is less than or equal to this 1 by n plus 1 factorial into 1 plus 1 by n plus 1 plus 1 by n plus 1 square etcetera. Okay. Now, what can we say about this last thing? What is occurring in this bracket is a geometric series, right? It is a geometric series and its common ratio is 1 by n plus 1. So, we can take the exact sum of this series, okay? And what is that sum? It is, okay, this 1 by n plus 1 factorial, it remains as it is, and this will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 by n plus 1, right? So, what we will get after simplification? It will be n plus 1 by n. Okay. So, sim here you have n plus 1 factorial. So, that 1 by that 1 n plus 1 will cancel. So, what will remain is this 1 by n factorial in into n. Okay. 1 by n factorial into n. Okay. So, the difference between e minus s n, e and s n will be always less than or equal to 1 by n factorial into n. Okay. And this tells you how many terms you should take to get the good approximation of E. Okay. For example, suppose this number is less than say 1 by 100. Okay. If this number is less than 1 by 100, then it means that that S n is the correct approximation of E up to 2 decimal places. Right? Okay. And what is that? For example, this number is going to grow very, uh, going to become the n into n factorial is going to become very large for even for small values of n. Okay. For example, if n is equal to 3, 3 factorial is 6, so it is 3 into 3 factorial that is the, that will be already 18. If you take it is n as 4, it is 24 into 4. Okay, so it is already bigger than 100, so it will be less than 1 by 100. Okay. So you can easily calculate the values of e, value of value, various values of e correct to whatever approximation you want. Okay. All right. okay. Now, this also has another very interesting consequences and that is not very easy to prove otherwise and namely that okay let us let me write that as a theorem okay. e is irrational okay okay yeah by the way what we have proved here is this let me write it here okay so what we have put is zero less than or equal to e minus s n and this is less than or equal to 1 by n factorial into n right for all n so, right this is important okay. till now you only know the how to prove that root 2 is irrational right no other number you know how to prove that it is irrational okay now let us take this proof it is it is quite different from the proof that root 2 is rational and for proving that we shall use this proof. Anyway, how does one go on proving that something is irrational? You can see it. There is only one way you assume that it is rational, okay. suppose it is rational and get it get into some contradiction. Okay. Okay. So, suppose E is rational. Okay. Suppose E is a rational means what? E must be of the form P by Q. Okay. Suppose E is of the form P by Q, where P and Q are integers and Q not equal to 0, right? Okay. Can we also assume that P and Q are positive? 
because we already know that E lies between 2 and that is something we know. Okay. So, so P and Q need not be, we need not take negative numbers. So, in fact, I can say that uh, instead of this, I can simply say P and Q belong to N. Okay. That is clear? Okay. All right. All right. Now look at this. Okay, this is true for every n. This is true for every n. So I can take n is equal to q. Okay, I can take n is equal to q. Okay. Okay. So what I can say is that uh, look at. Uh, okay, I'll I'll rewrite this in a slightly different manner. Okay. Uh, I can say this this from here it also follows that 0 is less than or equal to n factorial into e minus s n this is less than or equal to 1 by n for all that is also true right. Okay. I am just multiplying by n, n factorial to whole thing okay. and so suppose I use that for n factorial then what it will mean it will mean that 0 is less than or equal to n factorial into not n factorial q factorial into e minus s n okay e minus s n is e is p by q minus s uh, minus s q and less than or equal to 1 by n say 1 by q All right. Okay. Now just look at this. Can something like this happen? Okay. What what can you say about this number here? See, let us look at this. Q factorial multiplied by p by q. Should that be an integer? Right? Because it is this will be q minus one multiplied by p. Okay. All right. Then S q multiplied by q factorial should that be an integer? Because what is S q? Remember what is S q? S q is one plus one plus one by factorial two, etc., etc., up to one by factorial q. Okay. When you multiply that by q factorial, is it clear that what are you going to what you are going to get is an integer? In fact, a positive integer. Okay. So this number q factorial into p by q minus S q this must be a member of n. This must be a member of n, okay? All right. And so, what does it mean that there exists some natural number between zero and one by q? Okay, is that possible? Right? There is no natural number between zero and one by q, so that is not possible. So, that is a contradiction. Okay, this is a contradiction. Okay. It's a contradiction to what? contradiction to this assumption that E is rational. Okay. We assume that E is rational and that is how we got we started with this E is equal to P by Q okay. and so that proves that E must be irrational. Okay. All right. Now let us now come back. So far we have discussed the cases when the series consisted of non-negative terms and all the consequences of taking the non-negative terms. Okay. Now, how does one discuss the convergence or divergence of a series when the terms are not necessarily positive? Of course, one thing is that we can discuss absolute convergence. Okay. If you take the absolute values, then all the terms becomes non-negative and then we can apply. But that only tells you about whether a series is absolutely convergent or not. Okay. But it can happen that the series converges, but it is not absolutely convergent. Okay. And how does one go about testing those things? Okay. Of course, the actual fact is there are very few methods of testing that kind of convergence and we shall discuss only one such case okay. and that is the case what is known as Abel's test. Abel's test. Okay. And Abel's test is applied to what are known as alternating series. Okay. 
let me again repeat there is there are no good tests for testing the convergence of totally arbitrary series of positive and negative considering both positive and negative terms. So, this is one of those tests alternating series means what the series changes sign alternately okay. series changes sign alternately. So, the convenient way of representing that is you assume that all a i s are positive all a i s are positive let us let us say or let us say a n becomes 0 for all n and then assume that the series is like this a 1 minus a 2 plus a 3 minus a 4 etcetera okay. or it, which is same I say that the series is not sigma a n, but it is sigma minus 1 to the power okay. since we are starting a 1. So, minus 1 to the power n minus 1 into a n, n going from 1 to n this is the series okay. that is called alternating series that is called alternative series okay. And what does Abel's test says that suppose you have an alternating series like this that means the terms of the series are like this minus 1 to the power n minus 1 that is the series changes the sign okay alternately and suppose the follows suppose the following thing happens okay suppose suppose this a n's are monotonically decreasing okay suppose suppose oh, a 1 becomes or equal to a 2 etcetera in general a n is bigger than or equal to a n plus 1 okay okay. Of course, remember that this a n's are not a terms of the series okay terms of the series are plus or minus n depending on what is the value of n and this is one requirement and limit a n is 0 limit a n n tends to infinity is 0 okay. Then, then this series converges okay not sigma n this series converges okay. then n converges And we have seen that one of the ways of showing that a series converges is that its sequence of partial sums converges. Okay. In fact, that is the only way, really speaking, if you do not know any other tests, etcetera. And to show that a sequence converges, one of the ways of showing that it is a Cauchy sequence. Okay. And how does one show that a sequence is Cauchy? That again, the usually that is so you should show that for the large values of n and m, difference between S n and S m can be made small. Okay. So, suppose we take something like this that is 1 less than or equal to m less than n okay, 1 less than okay. and look at S n minus S m S n minus S m okay. Now, okay. now S n minus S m will be what it will be the corresponding terms of the series starting from m plus 1 m plus 2 etcetera etcetera. Okay. Now, only thing is we do not know whether m uh, that m plus 1 is positive or negative. But that depends on whether m is even or odd. Okay, let us to begin with. Let us assume that m is even. Okay, so, so suppose suppose m is even. Suppose m is even. Okay, suppose m is even. Then S n minus S m will be the first term will be a m plus one, then minus a m plus two, etc. Then again plus a m plus three, etc. Et it will go up to uh, let us say plus or minus a. I don't bother whether it is plus or. I will come to that little later. Okay. Okay. Now, what we can say from here is that this will be less than or equal to uh, okay, this will be equal to a m plus 1 minus this a m plus 2 minus a m plus 3, right, and then minus next a m plus 4 minus a m plus 5, etcetera. Okay. Now, if the last term is depends, it, it, will be, it may be either minus a n minus 1 minus a n or it may be just minus a n depending on whether n is even or not. In fact, that does not matter. Okay. What is important here is that each of these terms are non negative, right? That, that follows because of its its monotonically decreasing. Okay. So, each of these terms are non negative. Okay. So, that means you are subtracting some non negative quantities from a m plus 1 which is positive okay? a m plus 1. So, does it follow from 
that, that this means that mod S n minus A m sorry mod S n minus S m this is less than or equal to A m plus 1. Okay. This less than or equal to A m plus 1. Okay. Only, only problem is that we have only taken the case when m is even. Okay. We have only taken the case when m is even. If m is odd, what will happen? This will be minus A m plus 1, then plus A m plus 2 etcetera etcetera. Now, how to deal with that case? What I will say is that after all you want mod S n minus S n. You look at S m minus S n. Okay. Then that will be again A m plus 1 minus A m plus 2 etcetera etcetera and again you can show, do the same thing. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so, whichever way you take it really speaking it does not matter. Okay. So, even if the uh, what I want to say is that you can always show that plus or minus of this quantity will be less than or equal to A m plus 1 in all cases. Okay. So, whether it whether m is even or odd this will be the case is that clear. Okay. So, this means mod S n minus S m is less than or equal to A m plus 1 always. Now, what can we say about this quantity A m plus 1? You look at this last condition here we have assumed that limit of nth term goes to 0. Okay. Nth term goes to 0. So, so this tends to 0 as m tends to infinity, okay. but we assume that m is less than n. So, if m and m tends to infinity is m and n both tend to infinity, okay. which means you can given any epsilon, we can always find some n 0 large enough such that whenever m and n both are bigger than that n 0 this a m plus 1 is less than epsilon, but in that case mod s n minus s m will be less than epsilon. Okay. That is same as saying that this is a Cauchy sequence and that is same as saying that the series converges. Is that clear? Okay. So, that is the test for convergence of uh, alternating series. Okay. And one of the well known examples of this where this is applicable is this series 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 etcetera etcetera. Okay. You can see that here we have, we have taken a n as 1 by n, a n as 1 by n. Okay. So, this is a monotonically decreasing sequence, it converges to 0 and that is why this series converges, okay. this series converges. Okay. At the same time it does not converge absolutely, okay. because if you take absolute values it will be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1, it, it will be sigma 1 by n and we have already shown that that series diverges. Okay. So, this is an example of a series which converges, but does not converge absolutely. Okay. I think we will stop with that. We shall make a few observations about this series of this type and then we shall proceed to the next topic in the next class. Okay.